Welcome everybody to uh, Google Classroom, moving from Google Classroom to Canvas LMS. And I'm going to start off by sharing a, this presentation is going to kind of guide our webinar. And let me know if you guys are seeing a presentation. Okay, great. Um, there is the, <clears throat> if you want it, the presentation, there is a QR code and a bit.do shortener. Um, the presentation is just going to kind of guide 10 tips from moving from Google Classroom to Canvas LMS. And I am a new user for um, using uh, Canvas LMS. Our district in distance learning has adopted that and is moving in that direction. And I'm embracing it and I'm excited about it. And the great thing is, is that Google, uh, the Google platform, the G Suite integrates with um, Canvas LMS. And so I feel it's an easy transition and I just want to take you through my journey, and this is the first webinar. Um, this is part of Alice Keeler's uh, Drip subs uh, Premium Subscription. I started a week one setting up your Canvas Drip subs uh, subscription. Um, that was sent out last week, and we'll be sending out another one of those with the next tips. Um, just to introduce myself, and then if anybody in the room wants to introduce themselves, we'd like that too. Um, I'm Marcia Carrillo. I uh, am a mom of five daughters, and I also have a very supportive husband that's um, not in the picture. And I'm from Central California, actually, uh, Merced, California, Outwater, California, which is an hour north of Fresno. This will be my 32nd year as an educator. Um, I am currently a mentor. This will be my 15th year being a mentor and I am still growing and learning and really excited about distance learning and how we can reshape education by trying a lot of new things. Um, there's my Twitter and uh, there is the QR code. One thing about the QR code that's kind of cool is in Canvas, um, in Canvas, we, they have a QR code to enroll. That's one of the features, and I think that would be a, a great feature to use. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share and um, make sure that if you want to use the chat to ask any questions, that can further help me. Like, if, what do you want to know about Canvas? If, if you will put that in the chat, that will help me with the next webinar. That would help me with the next Drip subscription. Okay, so I do have some friends here today that are from um, my community. Um, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves so that we can feel like we're all learning together here. Okay, so uh, Becky. Hi, I'm Becky Gibson. Um, I'm also a mentor for Merced Union High School District. Um, I live in Mariposa, California, but I work in um, Merced and Atwater as well. Great, thank you for being here. Rochelle? Hi, my name is Rochelle Mendes and I also am a mentor at Merced Union High School District and I live in Turlock. Thank you for being here. I'll go next. I'm Jenna and I have my camera off for pretty obvious reasons. I'm doing you all a favor. I'm hot mess this morning, um, but I am teaching English at Buhack, and I live in Atwater. Um, and I am here because I, I've had a few like really basic lessons with Canvas, but I'm really interested how this year's going to look for me because I'm going to have a baby in November, and I'm trying to figure out the most seamless way to make um, the transition for my substitutes easy while I'm out. Uh, I wasn't able to get like one long-term sub last time I had a baby and um, and I don't know if it's going to be that way again. I'm not sure what that's going to look like, um, but no matter what I need it to be, if, if I could provide my learning and just have the sub kind of follow along and if I, cause by uploading that all in canvas, then, you know, that would be an ideal situation for me. So that's what I'm trying to learn in the next couple of weeks to get that all ready for the school year. 
Thank you, Jenna, for being here. And I'm thinking across the United States, I would like to know how many other pregnant women that are teachers do we have that no one's considering um, or thinking about what are we going to do when people go on disability? What are we going to do when, right. you know, right. so the long-term sub act, uh, and do you really, ha I mean, I want you to enjoy your baby. So please do take the time off. Okay. Thank okay. you, Marcia. Um, Andrea, did you want to introduce yourself? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Hi, I'm Andrea De Leon Vega. Um, I am an English ELD drama yearbook teacher at Merced High. This is going to be my 16th year teaching. Um, I've been at Merced High 15 of those. Um, and I just want to know more about Canvas. It's, I've heard that it's more interactive and I teach CTE based courses. And I, I've heard that it is, uh, a platform that is lends itself to those CTE courses that I teach. Yes. Um, one of the things I was finding out today, and thank you, Andrea, for being here and for sharing your, your information. So we have a, uh, in our group today, we do have a, a wide variety and um, I think you'll bring some value to what I end up sharing. So the first thing is that I've been learning and just let me know if you're seeing my slides again. If you want to let me know. Yeah, we can see. Okay, great. Um, Marsha, whatever side you're on, can you put that in the middle? So the ones on the side are, you know oh, what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I know what you mean. Like that. Or present mode. I think present mode. There yeah. We go. Thank you. <laughs> How's that? Long summer. <laughs> well, I'm. We're still learning here, so thank Beautiful. you. Perfect. Um, what I found out is that if you go, so let's make something clear about Canvas LMS. So our particular district, the district that I'm affiliated with, has purchased Canvas LMS. And so there's a district view. So when you go to Canvas LMS and you go to sign up or sign in, it one of the choices is create a free account or to create a, or look for your school. So I'm gonna start with that and show you what happens. So you can log on and create a free account. Right now, if you, know, you don't have to do anything I'm saying, but as the interactive part of this webinar, I will, um, I would suggest with a personal email to make a free Canvas account. I have been blown away by the resources provided in the free Canvas account and the communities that you start getting linked in because you're in the free Canvas account. Um, nothing against our, our school platform, but for some reason when they load the classes, they are blank. In the free account, one of the pluses is you start off with a basic module and all you have to do is edit it. So I, if you want to take the time right now, um, that's our first activity. And then I was just going to show you. So when it says log into your school's Canvas account, I found out because I'm not in my school um, Google account right now, so I'm gonna show you what happens. If you're not in your school Google account, when I find my district, Merced Union High School District, you notice how that pops right up. The cool thing is, is that it told me that I am not configured for this account because I'm using, I'm not using my MUHSD email. So that's just kind of a heads up on that, that if you're in the wrong, if you're in a private email, you're not going to you're not going to access your school Canvas. It's locked down. So uh, I found that out today. Again, this is part of my journey, and I also found there's different logons for Canvas. And um, one of the things is look at this. Always look at the URL infrastructure.com/canvas/logon. I will tell you that there, there's a difference. Uh, .net is it is like a different logon. And so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to tell you about that. 
is um, that dot net is your accessing resources, your accessing resources that they send to you. So that's like a different account. And I started thinking I was locked out. So anyway, always check the URL. Um, is anybody making an account? You can put it in the chat if you are. I will tell you that it has been a game changer for me to make a private account. That is where I'm doing all my learning. I am learning so much by making a private account. And I want to, I mean, I just think it's awesome that it's available for people. So here's my um, next thing that I want to teach you. So that's the learning management system, the login part is the navigation. So there's three words, dashboard, global navigation, and sidebar. These would be three words you wanna teach your students as well. So let's look at those in my free account. I'm gonna share that screen. Um, let me find it here. Um, uh, you know how it is when you try to share a screen, you have to be kind of on it. So, um, let's see, here we go. Um, sorry about that, you guys. I feel like I'm lost right now in my uh, account. I asked, how do I make a private account again? Yes, yes. So um, back over here to, okay. Okay. Jenna just sent her the link. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Oh, free free account. So that's the link for everybody for a free account. Are we making one then? Is that what we're doing right now? So that, that would help me to uh, re-navigate where I'm at here. Um, I think all of us are making a new. Okay, uh, great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, feel free to talk, you guys. Oh, here I am. I found myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So I wanted to share what it looks like in, um, are you guys able to see my, this is my sample class. Are you able to give me a thumbs up? Yes. Okay, good. This yeah, is, can... if you make a free account, this is what it comes across right here. It's red on the sides. And it, and it actually creates a class for you. And uh, while you're making your account, I'll go over those three parts of, of, the, um, of Canvas. You have your dashboard, which is your, shows your courses. You have this on the left-hand side is called global navigation. This is the global navigation. That's where I think most of your students will be clicking around over here. And then on the right hand side, this is called the sidebar. So this is where you can start a new course. I really like how it says view grades. That's always what students want to know is what's my grade. And this will also post upcoming assignments, the to do list and so on. 
in the chat if you want to let me know or you can speak up also um, how your you know accounts going like did you did you make one did you get there and then we're going to do a couple other things and Okay, great. So people are making the their account. And I the thing that's great about making a free account also is you can copy that course that you make in there, for example. And that can be your course for your real class. Okay, you can also send anything you make to a thing we're going to learn about called the commons. So the commons is one of the key features of Canvas. I, I believe that's why many districts are choosing it. Um, Commons is a spot where lessons, complete courses are uploaded. So if you don't want to start from scratch, you can upload a class from Commons and then just edit it. Take out what you don't like, put in your own stuff, but you have something to start with. Um, they also have just modules, just lessons, just quizzes, and you can load your things into the commons. And commons would mean basically it's free. It's free for anybody to use. And, um, but the good thing is, is when you start off, you do get a course in this free one that's already prepared that has a template. And, and that to me is the selling point on making a free, making a free account. I love it. So Jenna is sharing out in the chat and thank you very much is that she already found a freshman English course and she uploaded it into her sandbox. Um, and to me, that is, that's going to make a lot of teachers feel a little bit better for distance learning. And then as you go along, you can add in some of your own things. But there's some really good things out there. So um, once you have your free account, one of the things that I like to do is go over to the global navigation and click on account and go to profile. And this is something you're gonna want your students to do as well. You're, I would you know, encourage a picture, an avatar, something, and you know, make this personal for yourself and for your students. So to change your profile picture, you're going to click on the pin. And this was in the drip subscription week one as well. You could upload a picture, take a picture or from a Gravatar. So that's fun for kids and for you. So that personalizes your class when we can't see our students in person. So I'm just gonna take a picture because, and then it makes you allow. And you wanna be cute. Hey, take a picture. You actually have to click on the bottom and then save it. And now I have a new picture, so that's pretty easy. So if you wanna do that for a next step, just to see if you can do it. That would be a, another interactive task for you to do. You can add, um, so to edit the profile, you're gonna go to the edit profile button and that's where you can type in, you know, you might wanna put misses and then, you know, you might wanna put biology teacher biology instructor and a biography 
these students haven't met you. This won't be the only place, but parents can also access this through the parent app. That is something we'll be talking about is the apps. So you can put a little biography and you can do a lot of other things, links. Of course, these are things, and then save profile. These are things you can do later. These aren't, you don't have to do those today. Okay, so can somebody talk to me, please? And let me know what you guys are experiencing on your end. I'm setting up my biography and um, my contact. I have a picture in there already. Um, just editing that main profile page. Thank you, Andrea. I'm doing the same. Loaded my uh, picture and I put my name. I, I set my name to Mrs. Garcia, like you said. I think it's better that way for the kids. Um, and I haven't added any, any links yet, but I'll be working on that today. Okay, great. So I'm, you know, to me, it's kind of like as you do this, you start realizing, okay, yeah, I'm not going to put my first name. This is what my students are going to see, right? If you click on down, so you, you know, there's your profile. And I think that'd be fun for kids to do too. And fun for us to be able to see that um, biography, what they write. Maybe that's even an assignment. Files. So you can keep files here and all the files that you are, so you can upload files like from your computer or anywhere that you want to be easily accessible to Canvas. Um, you can create a new folder for that. But anything you upload into Canvas is in this automatically. So that's what files means. And if you notice up here at the top, this is where I'm navigating. So I click back on my name to get back to the profile area. And then settings. Now this is going to be, this is being recorded, so you can always go back later, but I want to let you know that this is a really key part. And again, you would have your students do this. In, in the school one, I noticed you did have to also do this. So in settings, there's a lot of things in it. Right here is the edit settings. And again, this is where, you know, you can put your name and so on. I thought something that was, um, I started noticing some really uh, cool things in the settings as far as um, letting kids select what they want to be referred to as far as their gender. So those are kind of an updated thing. You can add your Twitter handle another email address, another contact. But the main thing is the authorization of other services. In our district, in many districts, our Google or use the G Suite. You must authorize Google. So in the settings is where you do that. Other services. So you click on your Google Drive icon, authorize Google Drive. Then it's going to come up and you have to pick which Google Drive and allow. So even with your free account, you could link to your other Google Drive. Don't want to get us too mixed up here. I'm not linking these other things right here, but you can. And there are some other um, options here for you as well. I noticed when you get the app, you also have to authorize the Google, but it's a one-time authorization. It's also very easy to take it off with a click. So display name and so on. Notifications was something in the Kung Fu Canvas class that we took that they talked a lot about. 
there's a million notifications. I'm not an expert on notifications, but if I get too many, I'm not going to pay attention. So I think um, at least we know if students start saying, hey, I'm getting too many notifications, we know where to go to turn them off or to help them navigate those. Also, maybe there's some that we want to, um, so for example, an assignment due date, maybe we want that notification and we tell the students we want that one on. But there's options here about notify right away, send daily summary, send a weekly summary, do not send anything. So as a teacher, I know we can get too many notifications and then we don't like the, we have that in Google Classroom as well. Too many notifications and then we get upset about it. So um, there's a way to manage it. And I wanted to point that out. I don't know about the e-portfolios, I'm, but there it is, look, create an e-portfolio. So I feel that Canvas is very user-friendly and um, I'm sure that this is gonna be something that we're gonna wanna do. There's also the shared content. I feel that that would be a great, that's gonna be a great place for collaboration between subject areas. And then the QR for mobile login. So you can proceed and then you would give a QR code and students, they do like to go on their phone. And that's why I'm going to suggest one of the first things is not only I want you to get the app, but I want students to get the app and parents to get the app. You need the student and the teacher app. Okay, I stopped sharing. Let's have some, um, interaction what can you tell me that you have um oh i see a question here great would the e-portfolio be an effective choice for an e-binder for avid students well we might need to put that so there's some canvas communities thank you jenna for that question there's some canvas communities i mean i'm starting to become part of them and i encourage you to do the same um they're they're online and you just click and there's, I'm not part of the face group ones yet because I'm part of a lot of those, but there's a lot of free resources and we'll be having another webinar maybe next week even. I think that you might be onto something. The e-portfolio could be an effective choice for AVID because they would have the e-binder, I mean the e-portfolio for each of their Canvas classes and maybe, or just make one for their AVID class and they can pull things in from Canvas. I know that AVID, I saw that in one of the groups I'm in, that, that people are wondering what to do. And I, I did see some resources shared in that group. That's the Facebook Alice Keeler Teacher Tech Group. If you're not part of that, there's 20,000 members and you can post any question you want. And about 20 people or more come to your rescue. So it's a great place to stop, start. In fact, I'll put that in the chat. Um, any other questions? Let's let's share what we've learned so far. Why don't you tell me what you've made so far? Um, I know for me, I was really nervous about switching over to Canvas and it doesn't seem as complicated as I thought it would be, especially with allowing access to my drive because so much of my stuff is on there. So now just to be able to put it onto Canvas and make you know a little Bitmoji classroom and stuff, that will be, it, I think it's going to be easier than in I, than I anticipated. Thank you, Andrea. That that is what I found what, right away um, is that if we have access to our Google Drive, we're good. Yeah, I, so many of us have have it loaded from so for so many years of using it. So. I think that's going to be a plus for a lot of teachers is that they can just import all of their things from Google onto Canvas. So they're not reinventing the wheel. And then there's so many resources to already load in the commons. Okay. And that's what I want to do. Embrace it. Let's see how this can help make learning better, right? Improving learning. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Becky, tell, talk to us. I just want to say that um, 
being on this with you walking us through it and providing a visual and then explaining for me that's how i learn more than just watching um like going through an, an online course um, and I'm sure other teachers are out there are like that. So thank you for doing this because my anxiety about Canvas is like gone now. I feel like this is pretty easy. Agreed. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Becky. What did you learn so far, Rochelle? You might be an expert. Actually, I got caught on changing my profile picture. I was trying to make it a GIF and then it, it didn't, it just like, was a frozen frame, but um, I'm curious because I, I've just been playing around with it a little bit, but I'm curious to, once you get into the course, um, how to set up modules and the syllabus and discussions and, and things like that. Okay. Just kind of the basics, like so the bare if bones. If you put that in the chat, then that um, definitely will be part of the, I'm already looking at what I'm going to have in the drip. We're starting very basic. And, mm -hmm. but I want to address, I, to me, my thing is, is, I mean, how do we make an assignment, right? So let's get to that. So thank you for that lead in. Um, and I'm going to go back to my canvas page. And so we're over here again on global navigation. And you should have noticed that it, created a class for you, but this is the great thing about being in the free version, start a new course. What I noticed in our district version is, and that might change, but one of the things about the district version is usually all your courses are linked to ARIES or whatever your attendance program is. So it does not give you this option of start a new course start a new course is not an option in our district one. We have to email somebody and they start a new course for us because it's linked to our ARIES. One of the things that I had heard in our district is those aren't available yet. That is one of the reasons I'm encouraging the free course so that you can start building, so people can start building and then you can just copy your course. Okay, so start a new course is available and you would go ahead and give it a name, biology, and you know, are you wanting it private or public? So I'm wanting mine public, I don't care who can see it. And then if you go over here <clears throat> on the left-hand side, when you click in on courses, you notice I, I, re -ch I changed this one's name to practice course, but there's my new course biology and I'm ready to get started. And what's great about this free one is right away it says, it just pulls out that like start a module. But what I noticed on the right hand side on the sidebar <clears throat> is that you could choose a home page, view course free. So choose a home page is going to be where you want students to land. So there's some different things over here. Another one of my favorites is that isn't in Google Classroom that makes people not like Google Classroom is, don't you always want to know what are students seeing? Very easily, student view. This lets us know that we're in student view. And we get to see what students see. So when they're at home, then there's discussions and so on. What, how does it look to a student? How does it look to a student? So I really, and then down here, it says leave student view. In the mobile app, I'm really into apps right now. I'm late to the game, you guys. But the app, and you know, we always see students on their phone, they're going to like the app and they're going to be at home and no one's going to tell them they can't be on their phone. They're going to like the app. Um, in the app as a teacher, if you want to see student view, that's why you have to have student app also. So it'll give you, it'll say you, you're on the app and you put in an assignment, like right from the app in a minute, I could put an assignment in. If I want to see it in student view, I have to have the student app. 
and those are both really awesome. Those, I think apps have been upgraded. It looks just like this on, on the left-hand side. It looks like that a lot. It looks the same to me. So it's not something new to learn. And I can really see um, students it, using it a lot, but if you just want to put a quick thing up, and you can as a teacher too, and it's, it's fun. So we're going to go back over here to dashboard. So I created a new course. I mentioned about renaming the course. So remember, one of the things we always want to point out is our three dots. We know that that means there's more, right? And that's where we get to rename and change the color right here. So I called it a practice course. Um, we are actually going to be doing a lot of, I might go ahead and just call this my, um, canvas for new teachers and I want to change it to blue. There we go. Now you notice how it's not published. Publishing means they would have, everybody would have access. So you can be building it without. Uh, something else I noticed is you can put up modules and you can lock them so that they can't be viewed. So you know how in Google Classroom, sometimes if it's there, the kids already work on it and, and you might get upset which we're, we're really not upset that students are doing work, right? But we're like, you already did the work, now what are you gonna do during my class? Well, you can make it where it's not basically viewable or doable. So um, if that's something that you want, then that's available. So once we're in our course from the dashboard, I think one of the best things to learn you know, is yes, make a module. So a module, and I'm thinking this is, and um, I was at a Q conference online this week. It's a leadership development institute from people across the straight, the across the state of California, actually. And there was a woman that had been using Canvas for five years that gave a few tips, and I really liked them. So I'm, I already started adding a module. But I'm going to go ahead and model this for you is week one. You know, welcome to biology. So if you want to do it with me, just, just so you can see, you know, add a module. So you're in courses, pick your course, and then add a module. And I see, yes, I like that, Rochelle, she wrote in the chat, the basics of how to set up a class, discussions, assignments, quizzes. Great, that's coming in the next drip subscription. So uh, we have week one. One of the things that um, my new friend in Q told me about is that we want to, that she used week one and then what she did was she created assignments within that. And you notice right here, it says lock until, that's what I'm talking about, that lock until, and you can release it at a certain time. Isn't that great? So if you don't want people to be able to do that, lock until, they even have a time. So if you didn't want it, you know, I'm thinking about a professional development. We don't want them to do it until 2 p.m. <laughs> we lock them out. We probably won't, but that feature is there if you want it. Um, in a module, okay, so right here it lets you choose files. We'll just click on that for fun, right? And you can drag things in. This lets you, uh, this is that share to commons, common favorites, move a module. So the three dots is lots of things. Okay, so we're, we made a module right here. And now in this little plus button, you notice how it's not um, blue. It kind of makes you think that you can't do anything, but you can. That is where you're gonna probably want to add an assignment. This is the drop down menu. So you get to add an assignment, a quiz, a file, a page, discussion, um, an external URL, 
that is actually, I use quizzes for that. If you want to add quizzes or Kahoot or Quizlet, that's going to be your external URL. But um, assignment is what we're going to go over today. And you notice right here it says new assignment or um, so that's what we're going to click on. And they want you to give it a name. So I might call it the student survey. I'm not saying I'm going to do that digitally, but that was something I used to do in person. Don't indent. So you notice how it says welcome to biology. To me, the next, the next thing, it, I do want it to indent. I do want it to indent. Now, because I got this tip from my new friend, I also might say we want to start numbering things, okay? So in Google Classroom, we would use the three-digit numbers, 001. And that way, besides telling students that it is a, the assignment of student survey, we say the, the assignment number one. Assignment number one. Now, do we also want to, I don't know if it'll be redundant, but did we also want to say, this is Monday's assignment? Possibly. We're exploring things right now. I think it's good to ask students, is that helpful? Indent. Okay, if we don't indent, it stays even to the welcome to biology. I think I like to indent one level. Then you add the item and you notice where it's at. Now, what I can do if I have that on my, um, is I can add that right there, okay? Now, this is where I want to say your Google Drive comes in. On the left-hand side, if you scroll down, and you also notice Office 365, so it supports more than just Google. There's your Google Drive. You're going to pick and you're going to say, my student survey is in my Google Drive. It's not on my computer. I'm going to let you know, I don't think I have too much in my Google Drive in this particular account. But once you pick the Google Drive, it's kind of spinning right now. Let's see what's happening. Okay, log in. So this is where, right here, this is what you would do. I hope you're doing it with me, is you're going to need to authorize again. And I'm going to try and pull something up just for fun and allow. Great, great. And we might search for something. No files. Okay, I don't have much on this, so that'll be something for me to work on, um, but I want you guys to try that. So on the left-hand side, there is a, a Google Drive and see what you find. I mean, I do have that. Let's see if that works. Just to put something in there. It's actually prompting me to open it with Google Docs. Okay, let's see how we're doing on our um, get the app, start a new course, create a module, create an assignment. The next thing that I would like to share is the comments. So I'm going to go back to my course. See if that's an option for me. Um, no. Oh yes, I'm in my course, okay. So on the global navigation site, let's just go down here real quick. Courses, the calendar, that's everything gets linked to the calendar. 
all of your assignments and so on. This is an inbox. If you've used GradPoint, that's something in our district that we've used. So instead of having to go to your um, email separately, um, you'll have an inbox right that's linked to your email right here in Canvas. I think everybody will find that to be helpful. But Commons is, I think, where is going to be a big selling point. We do need to help teachers to be selective, um, but there's most of it is, you know, they'll tell you what's been featured. So, for example, I'm a biology teacher, and I haven't used Canvas before, but I've used Google Classroom, and I have all this information, all these things in there, but why don't I just see what other people are doing? This is a great way to collaborate with people across the world. So one of the things that you notice is they've got entire courses, but I also like this, just an assignment. Just an assignment. This is actually in this one, and look how it is, that you can download it, you can star it as a favorite, give the person a little feedback. Well, this could be you. That's the other thing. We have some great teachers in our district and throughout the nation, and I hope that they're all planning on sharing some of their work in the comments. There's different filters, what's most relevant. Um, some of the things like, I, we might as well go ahead and look at, look, is there an AVID class? Well, there is. Look at that. Look at that beautiful thing. And we might as well look and see what the other AVID teachers are doing. Some of them have a whole year in there. Okay, so since we did have people ask, look at that, an AVID binder checks. This is beautiful. So what I noticed is sometimes there's a course, sometimes there's just a home page. Like if you don't want to have to decorate your own home page, just find one. And um, we want teachers to focus on student learning and relationships. And, and while I'm supportive of making a cute Bitmoji classroom, if you're feeling stressed, don't, you don't have to make a Bitmoji classroom. You can use some of this stuff and then down the road make one if that's what you want to do. But I support the making of them because I think they're super cute. I just don't want people to feel pressure. So there's great things for AVID. Does anybody want to share out? I'm just wondering, it doesn't have to be a class you teach, but a class that somebody teaches that you're like, I don't know what they're going to find. I don't know what they're going to do. Let's name out some of those classes. Anybody, you can say it with your voice. Uh, I just found a whole drama course that I think that I can edit and use for my drama one, which is really nice. So I just need to go through it more carefully and either upload it or upload it and then edit it. So that's really exciting because I was a little bit pissed about that one. Thank you, Andrea. Um, I noticed in the chat, culinary was mentioned. And so, yes, there is culinary. I have a teacher, and I don't know if I looked for this last time, but diesel <clears throat> mechanics. Well, there it is, diesel engines. So thank you, we have something, right? Even if there's one, let's see. Oh yeah, so there was one class on diesel. So, you know, that's that one I was worried about. What about uh, wood? See, I'm, some of our CTE, yes, look at that, great. Um, so that, um, as a mentor or instructional coach, if you're trying to help people find some online content, this would be a great start for them. This is a great start, and you would download that. And, and even seeing, you know, how many downloads and how many likes lets you know, like, that one might be kind of popular, actually. So it looks like this is a featured one. Using Canvas during a school closure in K-12. So that's probably a learning class. I will say that also Canvas has their own um, course of learning. It's a free class and it just goes, it's an online class with videos. So um, that's kind of a self-learning. There is the help button. 
I noticed that when I, as I use it, lots of things come up on the right hand side suggesting things, but you can report a problem, um, access the training services, and you can search. So if you just want to search the Canvas guides for help. I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to stop the share. Has there been anything that I had you try that you felt had trouble with? I, I did actually in the modules when we were creating an assignment, I didn't attach a file and then the box disappeared. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna add a file? But I did, fi I did find in the edit, you have to hit edit and then it, it gives you a lot more options where you can do a description, you can leave instructions, add files. So there's a whole, I just didn't click on that part. So yes, okay, I, well, I did want to, I did want to show that. So thank you. And I'm going to show that part. Yes, thank you. That's the cool part of an assignment, actually. So um, I got distracted over here. I got excited about the comments and I forgot to finish the assignment. So good call there. In the assignment right here, this is what Rochelle's referring to, and this is where this is where it becomes excellent. This is why you want an assignment. Right here is the best thing ever. Okay. The toolbar. Insert media. Boom. Links. Remove link. Embed an image. There's your math symbols. Commons favorites. So if you favorite things when you're searching for commons, if you click on commons favorites, it's going to be waiting for you. Isn't that awesome? It's just going to be waiting for you. YouTube. Then this right here, more external tools. Look at that. Bring it right in from Khan, Quizlet, etc. There's your Google. Um, This lets you actually make a video right here. So I can make a video right here in the assignment. Ready, three, two, one, I'm gonna make one. Hello students, our first assignment is gonna be the student survey. Please tell me about yourself. I look forward to getting to know you. You can start it over if you want, but look at that. Look how easy it is to make a video Save it. Oh, upload it. That's an up, that's a different one. I think I'm good. Oh, you can also do it with no video. So that's right in the assignment and you did have to click edit. And if you notice that it's not blazing at you, this is also on the right hand side where you see links, files. So you have access to your files, upload a new file and images. So in assignments, that's kind of the favorite area. And you can say how many points it's worth, um, sometimes it, you don't have to count it as part of the grade. That was another thing that um, we noticed about the grade book. It could say requires peer reviews. This is a group assignment. Assign it to just one person or everyone. Due date and so on. And I think that was my favorite part about the assignment is that you could do the group and then require peer reviews. I think that those are two really important tools. Yes, that we haven't seen in Google Classroom, yeah. right? Absolutely. Not that we're, oh, look, there it is. So that video that I made, um, it just took a little while, probably because everybody's on the internet at my house, right? I haven't upgraded yet, you guys. And there it is. So it, I think with almost every assignment, of course, we want to keep our videos short. But in the assignment, to have a little video explaining something or welcoming students each day is going to be valuable. They're, they want to see your or hear your voice. 
They want to hear your voice, even if they don't see your face. And only we care what we look like on video. Students don't, you know, we want, and I, if you care what you look like, just to let you know, uh, something that I've really been enjoying is a ring light. A ring light takes 10 years off of your face. So that's my tip. That's my pro tip, a ring light from Amazon. And it does make you look younger. I, I did, I read a whole, um, I watched a whole video about it and that's why I purchased it. But actually it just to be kind of fun. Since we're at home, we're looking for things to introduce ourselves. Um, I also like the rubric feature at the bottom. Oh yes. If you click on that. I just found that too. Down yes, above. the rubric is a feature. So assignments is the most re robust part. Was that on? Go back, hit save, and then go back to the page where it was. Um, yeah. And then yes, right down here, the rubric. Yeah. And you can find a rubric too. Now, we know we're probably not going to do that on a student survey, but on our big projects or things that we really want students to meet our expectations, we need to have some kind of criteria, right? So that's going to be. Um, and then you have all these options here. So, you know, you can get carried away with um, all these clicks and everything, but it also can be very quick. You don't have to do all those, you don't have to enter all those different things. So kind of like how we did, we're gonna be wrapping it up here. We only got two more minutes is how assignments is. Let yourself know, I, I didn't write it that we were gonna do announcements, but to me, announcements is similar. announcements you'll notice it's always like over here on the right and see how that pops out so it lets you know what's an announcement and how to do it so an announcement is actually how i planned on sending out collaborative slides i'll model that next time i did that from my phone and it took me one minute i sent out collaborative slides to the whole class where every student can make one slide one slide and I used it in an announcement. So an announcement kind of looks similar to, um, see how you always come up with this very robust toolbar and so on. So it's, you have the same access as an assignment in an announcement. And discussions is the other favorite you tell yourself is we're gonna want students to discuss and to collaborate and respond to their classmates. And that's a similar, just add a discussion with a plus. And then it gives you a bunch of options, right? As far as you can have a file, enable a podcast feed. Is it graded? I really love that. You might not want it to be graded. Allow liking and add add to the student to do. So the student to do is what's gonna be on the right hand side. And then is this a group discussion and when it's available. So there's so many options that can make it so um, interactive for your students that I really feel that um, with a little bit of training and some time to practice with your colleagues and to play, you'll be very successful. And I wanna thank everybody for joining. This was part of Alice Keeler's premium membership, which is available on her website for $12 a month. And you, it includes um, free, after you pay the $12 a month, it includes the, uh, lots of webinars, office hours, and um, drip subscriptions, and all the subscriptions to all of her classes. So um, this was part of it and we thank you for listening. If you weren't here it live, it's gonna be posted. And for those of you that were here, I really appreciate your interaction and playing along with me. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye.